Good morning, church family. We just wanted to go through a few morning uh, announcements here uh, on May 31st. Glad you could join us for worship. Uh, we uh, were not able to get our discussion panel together this last week, but we will get it done this week. Um, also, we have our women's prayer meeting on Tuesday evening on our women's group on Facebook. And then our Thursday men's prayer meeting with the pastor uh, at 7 p.m. on each of those nights. Uh, also, if you have not already seen the announcement, we are returning to on-site services on June 7th. That is next Sunday. Can you believe it? It is here. We will have a 9 a.m. service and a 10.50 service. That way we can spread out and uh, we can recognize our social distancing uh, guidelines and keep the sanctuary clean between the two. And we'll have pews marked off and we'll have some different ways that we go about doing things uh, in the day and time that we are in. But we ask that you come with open hearts that we might come together as one body and worship our Lord and help each other through this time. And again, we do want to throw out that if you are in one of the uh, groups that are more likely to uh, contract the disease, we ask that you, you don't feel bad about staying home. It's okay to stay home. You can stay home and watch from online that's just fine. We'll still be here on Facebook Live and on YouTube, and we'll keep it streaming for you. And last but not least, we want to point you to our app. Uh, just download Share Faith, all one word. It has a little ink through fish on it. And then you go to My Ministry, and you type in FBC Frederick, and you can download it. That'll give you a direct link to our YouTube page, a direct link to our Facebook and it also has a direct link to online tithing. So we want to remind you today to be sure to uh, do your tithe online. If you don't have a smartphone and you don't have the app, you can go to fbcfrederick.com and click in that top right corner, the little red circle that says give, and you'll be able to tithe. And you can even set it up recurring if you want to. So be sure to do that and pursue that. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to our praise team as we head into this time of worship. Greetings. 
fun than others. Check in and say 
who you are and your relation to them. And that'll be your way to stand up as they come down the aisle, as it were. And so we'll present them. And we have special recognition uh, senior gifts that we'll be delivering to them this week. And so we are very grateful for our seniors. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to present to you the 2020 graduating class of First Baptist Church of Frederick, Oklahoma. Asley Ray Clark. Asley is the daughter of Kendall and Cheyenne Clark. Her grandparents are Don and Janet Allen. Her brother is Tristan Clark. Asley was born March 14, 2002. She came to know Christ in September of 2009. Asley is graduating from Frederick High School, having been in National Honor Society two years, the outstanding top 10 of her class two years, the principal's honor roll for two years, the superintendent's honor roll for two years, the student council vice president, and is currently the student council president, was junior class vice president, and is the senior class secretary, was cross country top five, was OSSAA game day cheer competition runner up, OSSAA Game Day Cheer Competition Top 5, OSSAA Cheer Competition Top 10, and a 2020 Robotics Worlds Qualifier. She has been involved in Spanish Club, Student Council, Cheerleading, Track, Cross Country, Robotics, Ag, and Powder Puff. Asley plans to attend Redland Junior College this fall and major in Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, Asley Ray Clark. Abby Elise Espinosa. Abby is the daughter of Stacy and Jimmy Espinosa. Her grandparents are Fred and Sylvia Foster and Jim and Beverly Espinosa. Her sister is Maddie Espinosa. Abby came to know Christ in December of 2011 graduating from Frederick High School, having been in National Honor Society, and receiving the National Society of High School Honors Award on the Principal's Honor Roll, one-year state choir soloist, a four-year member of Southwestern's Honor Show Choir, four-year state superior ensemble member, three-year all-region choir member, a two-year high school large group state superior member. In FFA, she received the Discovery Degree, the Green Hand Degree, and the Chapter Degree. Her plans are to attend Southern Nazarene University in Bethany, Oklahoma this fall with a major in elementary education and a minor in music. She will also be a part of the SNU Honor and Women's Choir. Abby just wanted to take this moment to say, I would like to thank my church family for everything from the past 18 years. I have been so very blessed to have been a part of such an amazing church. I will forever be grateful for the memorable Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. My faith has grown in so many ways and I couldn't have done it without my amazing Pastor Shane and fellow peers. As I attend SNU in the next few years, I hope to share and gain more of the gospel with others. I cannot wait to see how God shines his light on me and how he guides me through one of the biggest parts of my life. Thank you, church family. Ladies and gentlemen, Abby Elise Espinosa. Joshua Keith Lewis. Josh is the son of Keith and Amber Lewis. His grandparents are Kenneth and Deborah Allen and the late Jack and Frieda Lewis. His brother is Sam Lewis. Josh was born July 17, 2001 and is graduating from Frederick High School. Josh was National Honor Society for four years, all district football two years, 
on the Class A All-Star football team, and in the school's top 10 for three years. Josh's plans are to attend Southwestern Oklahoma State University in the fall with a major in education. He then plans to continue his education and get his master's and doctorate in education administration. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Keith Lewis. Brianna Krista Nicole Weber. Brianna is the daughter of Heath and Becky Weber. Her grandparents are Tim and Paula Weber. Her brothers are Dylan and Carson Weber. Brianna was born January 2nd, 2002 and is graduating from Frederick High School. Brianna is in the top 10 of her class. She's on the superintendent's honor roll. It's part of TAG, Big Topics, State Runner-Up in Robotics, World Qualifier in Robotics, 4.0 in concurrent classes at WOSC, Principal's Honor Roll, Rotary Student of the Month, Basketball Senior Captain, and Cheerleading Senior Captain. Brianna has received the State Game Day Cheer Runner-Up, Superior District Choir Ensemble, People's Choice Award for Miss Frederick, two years in a row top 10 overall cheer competition, Top 5 Game Day Competition, UEA All-American, OSSAA Regional Academic Cha Champion in Cross Country, and in Basketball, the Comanche County Tournament Champs. Uh, in her community, Brianna has been involved with the Tillman County Food Bank, the Oyster Fry, cleaning the Bomber Bowl, stocking the concessions, painting the streets, nursing home caroling, Adopt an Elderly, Community Cleanup, Salvation Army Bell Ringer, and Donating Blood. This fall, Brianna plans to attend Southwestern Oklahoma State University and then continue on to get her master's and become a certified public accountant. Ladies and gentlemen, Brianna Krista Nicole Weber. All right, how awesome was that? So we want to encourage you to call your seniors this week and let them know how proud you are of them and be sure to comment as well. And we're going to continue on with our service. And I wasn't aware that Shane was preaching from Ecclesiastes uh, this morning whenever I uh, let Blake know which verse of scripture to use, but this is out of Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 14. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider, God has made the one as well as the other, so that man cannot dis discover anything that will come after him. And this verse holds so much, but I think during this time uh, of this pandemic and the COVID-19 that we've been enduring, if you're like me, you maybe you were taking things for granted and you didn't realize that uh, maybe we've had prosperity times and good times, uh, but it takes something kind of tragic like this to happen to realize the blessings that, uh, that we had. The other thing is just in knowing uh, that we can trust in God through the good times as well as the bad times. I know for me, it's easier to, to place trust in God when things are smooth. But when it comes, especially the unknown, and that's what it talks about in the latter part of that verse where it says, man cannot discover anything that will come after him. When it's, when it's we don't know time, whether it's good or bad, or when it becomes, we don't have a clue, we don't understand, where is our trust then and where is our faith then? And so we have to continue to have that trust in God and through his provision of Jesus Christ. Uh, because it just seems like it is so easy to... Uh, let fear and panic take over. And, and I'm not saying to dismiss or trivialize any uh, risk uh, or, or any of the, the warnings, but I think as Christians, we need to take our faith to another level. 
And uh, the term I keep hearing over and over and over is unprecedented. We are in unprecedented time. Well, what would it be like if Christians, if we had unprecedented faith, faith like we've never had before? Amen. Amen.
All right. Well, if you have a copy of God's Word this morning, open to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Um, last week, I started a uh, new series on the way of the worshiper. Um, we talked about the, the presence of worship. What, what is worship? Um, and and I, I read from uh, Exodus chapter 33. Um, and Moses said to the Lord, he, he, said these verse, he said these words to the Lord. Look, you have told me uh, leading these people, but you have not uh, let me know who you will send. He, he began to say, let me see your glory. Uh, Moses began to ask God that. But we saw... Um, we saw the definition of worship. What is worship? Well, it's really worshiping something that has worthy, um, something that's worthy to be worshiped. And that's Jesus Christ himself. Uh, we saw the realities of God's presence, the, the reality of God's omnipresent. Like God is always with us. He tells us throughout scripture. He said, for where two or three are gathered together, there I am among you in the midst. Um, he said, even in Matthew chapter 28, he said, I, I am with you always, even till the ends of the earth. And we have to understand that as we worship this morning, as we worship today, that we realize that God's with us. Um, as we prepare to enter back into uh, worship next week, into the building, we realize as we walk into the building that the presence of God is with us because he, he says that he's with us. And so we have to understand that. But and then I talked about what was the need in worship from last week. I talked about Moses had two, two requests from God. He, he said, God, he said, for I am hungry for you, God. He said, for, for I am hungry. Let me see your glory. I think that was something that Moses talked about was how he wanted to see the glory of God. The other thing was, is he had an encounter with, with an almighty God. Uh, when you think about um, that encounter, I, I'm going to go a further step and I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 5 because I, I think from, from the last point that I shared, what is needed, I think some of the points that Solomon gives um, today, I, I think that is something that is also needed before we walk into the church. Listen, I, I think worship starts at home. I think every day is a time of worship. And when the time you get up to the time you go to bed, I think it ought to be a time of worship. Um, your worship and my worship are two different things, but I worship to music. I, I love that last song that you guys sang. That, that is, Vincent's right, that is the gospel all meant, all wrapped up in one song in Christ alone. And when you think about that, that is worship, you know? And, and so, but listen, this moment that I'm fixing to read scripture is also worship. Amen. We can also go further step and say that as we have our offering time, that is also worship because we're giving back to God what God has given to us. And so as Solomon writes this, I, I just love the book of Ecclesiastes because here is Solomon in his old age. Um, Solomon is older in life and, and yet he's. Um, trying to teach younger people. He, he's telling these younger people, he said, listen, I've made a lot of mistakes in life. He said, I've done a lot of crazy stuff in life. He said that when God asked me, hey, you can have anything you want. Solomon asked for wisdom. So he became the smartest man, but yet he really wasn't um, the kind of man that you wanted to, to follow after with all of his wives and concubines. But, but he writes now to this and he's telling them, he said that, I love chapter one because in chapter one, he talks about that anything apart from God is vanity. It's futile. It means nothing. He said, you can live this life all that you want, but apart from Christ, apart from God, life is just meaningless. It's, it's, it's vanity. It's futile. It means nothing. And so he comes down and, and we understand in chapter three, he talks about the mysteries of time. There's an occasion for everything. And, and he talks about the loneliness in chapter four, about the loneliness of wealth. He, he begins to say, you know what? I, even though I had all of this money, even though I had all of this stuff, he's saying that, that I, 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 I'm, I, I'm lonely. And yet he comes down to um, chapter five. And he talks about caution in God's presence. And, and I like what he says here because I, I want to set this up for you that, that I think we have to take a little bit of caution before we come into God's presence. Are we prepared to worship? Is our hearts ready to be in the presence of God, knowing just like I said last week that God is always with us, that he's always going to go before us, 
but we have to prepare ourselves before we enter into worship of an almighty God. Listen to what he says. And starting in verse one of chapter five, he said, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Better to approach in obedience than to offer the sacrifices as fools do, for they are ignorantly doing wrong. Verse 2, do not be hasty to speak and do not be impulsive to make a speech before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. Just as dreams, as, as accomplish many labors. He said also a, a fool's voice comes with many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it because he does not delay in he does not delight in fools. Fulfill what you vow. Better than you do not vow than you have vowed and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth bring guilt on you and do not say in the presence of the messenger that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry with your words and destroy the works of your hands? For many dreams bring futile, uh, futile, so do many words. Therefore, fear God. Let's pray together. Father, this morning, I, I just pray that, Lord God, that in the midst of, of this time, Lord God, as we worship, uh, Lord God, as we just listen to your word, I, I pray that we worship through this time. And Father, that as we prepare our hearts today to worship you, as we prepare our hearts tomorrow to worship you. And Father, as we prepare our hearts, Lord God, to just even um, come back into um, a time of, of worship in this building, I, I pray that, Lord God, that we would take what we learned today and apply them in our life. And Lord God, begin to live that out every single day. Father, we thank you for what you're giving and what you're doing. It's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. I heard a story that a preacher wrote, and, and this is what he said. He said, people on an airplane and people in a church pew have a lot in common. He said, all are on a journey. He said, most well-behaved and presentable. Some doze, others, others enter into a mindless trance. A few gaze out the window. Most, if not all, are satisfied with the experience. For many, the mark of a good flight and the mark of a good worship service are the same. They would say, nice, we like it. It was a nice flight. It was a nice worship service. And we exit from the airplane or we exit out of the church the same way we entered, unmoved, unchanged, unaltered, and we're happy to return next week. He began to say that entering in the church and looking at the faces a few are giggling. A couple is, is cranky. But the, by the large and the, by the most and the large contents, he said they sit and they look ahead and lean things the way that they are. He said that we already know that when we come in, that we're really not trying to experience an almighty God. You see, I thought as I read that story uh, over the last several weeks as I prepared for um, this series... Here's what I thought. I thought, you know, here it is that sometimes as we, um, we, we come to church, we, 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 we listen to the music, we, we sing, but we have no expectation of an almighty God. We're not expecting God to do something. When's the last time we come to church? And, and, and think about this before we, we had all this pandemic, but when's the last time in this building that we said, you know what, I'm going to get up, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to say, God, I'm expecting you to do something mighty today. That when we leave, that we all that's all we do, that's all we talk about. It's like when we go eat, we sit down at the table, wherever we are, we, we sit there and we just talked about what God has done. And I think as Solomon gives us four things real quickly, I think Solomon tells us four things of what we need to do to prepare our hearts. As, as I said last week, what is needed in worship? I told you Moses had those two requests, hunger for God and encounter with God. And I would say Solomon gives us four things. And here are those four things to what's needed to get ready for worship as we prepare ourselves for worship. The first is this, 
to get ready to meet with God. Look, look back at verse 1. He said, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Better to draw near in obedience than to offer sacrifices as fools do, for they ignorantly do wrong. He said, guard your steps. Listen, this phrase, guard your steps, means to, to proceed with reverence. We approach God. Listen, when you go back and you, you begin to read in Exodus and you begin to see that Moses met with God in the burning bush. And then what did God tell Moses? Take off your sandals for where you're standing is holy ground. I'm not saying that we have to take off our sandals, but I would say that as we enter into this building, we guard our steps because we're going to the house of God to worship who? An almighty God. We're not coming here to worship anybody else. We're not here to worship people. We're not here to worship the building. We're not here to worship the pews, the carpet, the, the, the paint on the walls or what the building looks like. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Because why? Because we guard our steps and we get ready to meet with an almighty God. I think some of us do church kind of like we do lunch. Have you ever thought about that? Is, is we just enter in time of a time of lunch, we, 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 we come unprepared, we come casual, we, we come just in a meeting place where we say, you know what, I'm, I'm about to have lunch. I got a phone call this past week and a, a guy asked me, he said, hey, would you want to meet for lunch next week? And I said, man, yeah, what's good? He said, let's go for Wednesday. Okay, so, so should I prepare myself to meet with him for lunch? I could. But I think that's different than it is to prepare ourselves to get ready to meet with an almighty God. We've got to have this time with God. We've got to have this mindset of, you know what, I'm fixing to encounter an almighty God. And as we encounter God, we have to understand that now we're ready for God to do what? To speak to us. We need to be encouraged to come worship, prepared to worship, to pray and to ask God to prepare our hearts to hear from him. I'd say the second thing he says in, in, in verse 2 is, is he says that we need to listen to God. Look, look at verse 2. He said, don't be hasty to speak and, and do not be impulsive to make a speech before God. God is in heaven and you are on the earth. So let your words be few. One man said this about his wife. He said he, said he and his wife had words, but he often never got a chance to use his he said, my wife just talks all of the time and I never get the chance to use my words. When you think about that, I think God has words to say to us. And I think sometimes we never give God the chance to actually speak to us because we're in the process of making speech before God. We show up to worship after a mad dash of leaving home because maybe we're running late or whatever it is and we have a few choice words in the car. We, we come in time after time and we're, we're running late or, or we show up early. Maybe, maybe we're on that other side. Instead of showing up late, we show up early. And yet we'll grab a bulletin and, 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 and some of us will we, we'll sit there and we'll proofread the bulletin because we've got to figure out if there's any typos in the bulletin. And if there is typos, then we have to go and tell everybody else, look, there's typos. And, and yet we look around when we're walking in to make sure nobody took our seat. And so we, we finally sit down in our seat. We take out the notes of the preacher to make our shopping list for the week or, or our to-do list for the week or whatever it is that we want to write on there. But we never spend time listening for God because our minds are somewhere else. Listen, I, I've been there. I, I've been in worship services sometimes before where I'm just sitting there and, and I wonder about everything else and, and I'm wondering about what, what's to come, what's going to happen, what's, what, what's going to take place after all of this and, and yet never really spend time trying to listen to an almighty God. That, that's why David said in Psalms 46 and verse 10, he said what? To be still and know that I'm God. Have this preparation to hear from God. I think that's why Solomon, as Solomon begins to write these words, he, he begins to say, he said, don't be hasty to speak and don't be impulsive to make speech before who? Before God. I remember when I was uh, 18, 19 years old, I, I got to go on a, a Emmaus walk and, and I, I got to go to the panhandle and there was one night that as we got ready to worship, they told us, they said, hey, as you leave your place of where you're sleeping 
and you line up, we had to line up in this big line, and, and there was probably like 50 or 60 um, college kids in this um, walk that I was on. And one of the things that we had to do was, is as we walked into the tabernacle, we couldn't talk, we couldn't say anything, and yet it, they told us an hour before, you have an hour to prepare your hearts to hear something from God. And as the speaker got up, as the band got up to play music, it, it was just one of those deals where, you know what? You couldn't do anything but hear from God. And that's what, that, that's what I think ought to be from us week after week after week as we prepare ourselves to come into a holy place to hear from a holy God that we ought to sit down and go, you know what? Hey, nothing else outside of this building on a Sunday morning matters except for hearing from an almighty God. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we're having for lunch. Heaven forbid, I, I can tell you, I, I'm ready for lunch. I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to have some pie. I'm ready for all that my mind thinks about when I get to eat again. Because you don't get this body by not eating. I mean, just think about it. I'm right? I'm, I'm in shape. Round to shape. Amen. So I'm fully in shape. Oh man. Oh man. Oh me. I don't know. Something. But listen, when we walk through the door, we ought to come ready to worship God. And we ought to come, not be hasty to speak, and not be hasty to do anything else, but ready to listen to an almighty God. I think Solomon offers instructions for experiencing God in worship. I think when you go back and you begin to read verse 2 again, he said, don't be hasty to speak and don't be impulsive to make a speech before God. God is in heaven and you are on the earth, so let your words be few. I think as we walk into church, it's like, like as we get ready to, to come back to June the 7th, our first Sunday back, it's going to be good to see people. You know, we're going to want to high five or we're going to want to fist bump or we're going to do a lot of stuff. But, but let me encourage you that I think what we ought to do is really when we walk through the door, prepare our hearts to one, to be glad to see everybody, but two, be excited to be in the building where we can just truly shout and praise and listen to an almighty God. But I think Solomon tells us that the third thing I'll tell you is we humble ourselves before God. We humble ourselves before God. Here's the point. God is, in, God is God and we're not. God is in heaven and we are on the earth. God is the Lord and we are his children. As we prepare for worship, Remember that we are to approach God in a state of humility. We are to bow before him and fall down before him. That's why that great song says, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, when we think about serving God, you realize that just like people like Moses and Joshua and, and Jacob and even David himself Man, they, they, they were humble to be in the presence of an almighty God that they would bow down before him. And listen, I'm not saying that we have to worship on our knees, but I think sometimes we have to humble ourselves before an almighty God and say, God, you are so awesome. Just think about how awesome God is. We encounter the very presence of God. We begin to see the life from God's perspective. Then we worship and we gain a new view from the throne of God. When's the last time that we actually just said, God, I, I come before you humbly. And God, I come just to worship you because you are awesome. You are awesome. I, I think that we humble ourselves. Last week, I, I quoted that verse in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, that, that began to talk about that if my people, which are called by my name, will what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then I'll heal their land. I think that's a state of worship. I think it's a state of listening to God. I think it's a state of, of prayer. I think it's, 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 it's all wrapped up in humbling ourselves. And listen, we as people are not humble people. We're sometimes prideful. We're, 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 we can be arrogant. We can be a lot of things. But I think God's saying that, hey, before we come and worship him, let us come humbly before the throne of God. Did you realize that at the foot of the cross, it's a, it's a flat surface. It's equal. 
And I want you to understand that, you know what, doesn't matter who you are or what your status is in life or where you came from or, or what you do in life, that every one of us needs Jesus. And every one of us needs to come humbly before an almighty God. I say fourthly, if you look at verse 7, he says to take God seriously. Look, look at verse 7. He said, for many dreams... He said, so do, do not do, do not, so do many words. He said, they bring few, uh, few, uh, vanity. He said, therefore, bring, uh, he said, therefore, fear God. He, he said that, hey, for many dreams, bring many words. Fear God. To fear God does not mean to dread or to be terrified. It means to have a holy awe or a respect. In other words, we take God seriously. We take God seriously. And I think far too often we, we take God a little too lightly. We approach him in, in casual fashion. We approach him just we, we feel like we just need something to talk about or, or what's been burdened me. God, here's my problems, God. And God, I, I promise God that I, I will worship you tomorrow. But, but we, we, we don't take God as serious as sometimes as we ought to. We just come to him and, and, and here's our, my bucket list, God. Here's where, here's where my problem is, God. And God, but I know that, God, I'm going to worship you no matter what. We sometimes think of God as our buddy or our pal. But in reality, he is the eternal God of the universe and has claim on our lives because he has placed eternity within our hearts and to approach him with respect and reverence. Entering God's presence really is not a joking matter. I was reading in the Old Testament, and as I've made my way through Exodus, and I've got to Numbers, and, and I'm halfway through with Numbers, but uh, I got to thinking, here it is, that, that, that you know, when they went to the, um, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, and, and you realize that if they touched it wrongly or whatever happened, they dropped dead. They, they just fell over. So I think that we have to understand that, that as they got there and they did these things, that God was like, hey, you're supposed to do the things that I've asked you to do. And I think throughout time, God has asked us to truly, one, take him serious, but come humbly before him and worship him for who he is. Worship is not an enduring a contest, but a marvelous adventure into the presence of an almighty God into a universe. You see, I think no matter what has happened, I, I find myself still worshiping an almighty God. Just this past week, I, I don't know how many of you know this. I know Blake and Vincent know, but my dad was placed in the hospital and he went in with pneumonia. He got out, still sick, um, went back into the hospital, um, I called him last night. He was not doing well. Um, my, my dad has stage three cancer. It's in, it's in both lungs. It's, it's uh, metastasized from one lung to the other. He's got uh, Big masses in his right lung, one in his left lung, and one that's on his diaphragm pushing into his stomach. We couldn't figure out why he's lost 40 pounds, and now we know. Doctor called me and, and was explaining this to me, and in the midst of all of that, I talked to my dad, and I said, Dad, everything's going to be okay. I went back to Scripture, and I, and I began to read Scripture, and you might think I'm crazy, even though my heart's broke for my dad, even though that it's painful to hear that. But I worship an almighty God. Why? Because he has better plans than we do. His plans are better than ours. And, and yet in the midst of that, I, I said, God, I'm humbled before you, God, that whatever happens, whatever takes place, you know the plans. So I tell you all of that for this, because no matter what we face in this life, just as Vincent was saying, that even though like this Corona or whatever's going on, listen, we get caught up in a lot of different things. But listen, 
God is in control and he is wonderful and he is worthy of our praise that even as that song said, we bow down before him, heaven and earth adore him. Why? Because he is the God and the creator of everything. And no matter what, we ought to pour our lives out before him. He created us to worship him. And we need to just respect God enough and come humbly before him and say, God, I love you. And I praise you no matter what. Amen. So I pray that no matter what you face in this life, no matter what you do, as you prepare this week, the one thing that's needed is that we come wanting to hear from God.